What's happening, road dogs and highway hounds? You guys like going for rides, don't you? Well, here, let's go for one. Even if you don't, I don't care. I'm taking you with me. You're stuck. Held captive. Held against your will. Check this out. In the little town of Andalusia, Illinois, where I grew up. No, but, uh... Oh, what was I going to talk about? Oh, yes. I'll never forget what I was going to talk about. I was thinking a brief history of cryptocurrency from my point of view. From somebody who's been around since right around late 2013. Or no. It would have been 2000. It would have been around 2011. 2011, I started paying attention. 2013. Late 2013, I think I bought my first uh, Bitcoin, which I traded for Litecoin, that I learned on uh, uh, I, f I realized that one on, on Bitcoin and Coffee Channel, which was weird. How you could do an interview and learn something about yourself. But that's what happened to me. But anyway, so check out his channel. Also, I just found another channel that was pretty cool. It was... Uh, Ivan for tech or Ivan knows tech or something like that. I will try and put a link in the bottom to his channel. So Bitcoin and coffee, you have to find that on your own. And uh, Ivan, something tech Ivan. Just look in the description. But anyway, a brief, brief history of cryptocurrency see from somebody who witnessed it. So everybody heard about Bitcoin, right? So I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm paying attention because I love liberty, I love freedom, and I love, and I pay attention to financial things. I'm, I'm more of a financial kind of a guy. A lot of the people in uh, these spaces, they're in this space, are techies, and I'm trying to become uh, a little more understanding to people who uh, like this Ethereum garbage, but... And I think it's because either one or two things, they were involved in the pre-sale and they're greedy, or they're techies and they don't understand finance at all, which can't fault them for that. But anyway, so Bitcoin came around. When I started hearing about it, I started hearing it about it. I heard it on Andreas Antonopoulos, the Jefferson Club talk, when he's sitting there clinking glasses and whatnot. Yeah, that wasn't it. There was Let's Talk Bitcoin was a, was a show that was on. And I remember there were people going across the country. This is 2011. They're, I'm going to try and make it across the country. A bunch of libertarians from Porkfest. From, because I guess uh, Gavin Andreessen went up there and introduced it to the libertarians because he understood what it meant for freedom. Possibly. Could be because the U.S. government created it and they wanted to start disseminating it. But we don't know because Satoshi is anonymous. And who cares? It's here. So now you're going to have to deal with it. But it could be Satoshi was a benevolent individual or Satoshi could be a you know, diabolical person. Who knows? Who knows? Nobody knows because nobody knows who Satoshi is. Right? So, anyway. So... I kind of ignored it in 2011. That was right about the time that Litecoin was created. I didn't know this because I didn't care about it. I just thought it was a bunch of, you know, I thought it was another Liberty Dollar or another one of these weird currencies that libertarians tend to come up with, which I consider myself a small L libertarian. That's why I pay attention to that stuff, and that's why I heard about it so early. But anyway, so that being the case... Uh, I, uh, I, I knew about it, and in 2013, I was, I'm a history buff, I'm, I was a history major and a philosophy major and a theology major in school, kind of dabbled in all of them, and, uh, and I still do. But, uh, and that's why this channel is more of a philosophy channel than, uh, it is like a techie channel. Anyway, so, being a history major, I understood that 
in November of 2013 when the U.S. Senate, FinCEN, held a U.S. Senate hearing on this Bitcoin thing that I had been hearing about on cryptocurrencies. If you look up Senate hearing cryptocurrencies, you will probably find that. It was released in 2013. Senate FinCEN, search those words. Financial crimes and something. Anyway, so I watched that, and they basically, I watched that and I took notes. I get, I get a little nerdy sometimes when I, when I, and when I knew what happened was basically in a nutshell what that, what I took away from that Senate hearing was that they couldn't destroy Bitcoin. They wanted to, but they couldn't. And because of that, they were going to regulate it. They were threatening people that if you don't pay your taxes on it, we're going to come get you and throw you in jail forever. That was what I took away from that. And then I knew already that Bitcoin was a deflationary currency. These other cryptocurrencies are not necessarily defla deflationary. Okay? Ethereum's not deflationary. Ripple's not necessarily deflationary. All these things are not necessarily deflationary. Bitcoin and Litecoin are. And I understood that Bitcoin was gold and Bitcoin, Litecoin was silver. Uh, Donald McIntyre of NewFination.com uh, did an interview with Charlie Lee, and I watched that one. And those are two pivotal or monumental, uh, monumental videos in my understanding of of Bitcoin and Litecoin. And this is 2013. And immediately I, understanding gold and silver and those types of things, I latched on to the gold and silver of cryptocurrency and I have never let go. Now there was a big movement and I can't remember when I mean, Vitalik was around from the beginning, okay? If you read, like, some of the first Reddit feeds on, on Litecoin, Vitalik was around. And Vitalik is a very intelligent person. There's nobody doubts that. But, like I was kind of alluding to earlier, some of these techie people are not good at finance. And I would definitely throw Vitalik into that thing. Now, Vitalik was talking about this Turing Complete platform called Ethereum and what Ethereum the way and from my witnessing of what happened with Ethereum they did a pre-sale which is basically they pre-mined a bunch of coins and you could go in and buy these pre-mined coins and they would give them to you but they didn't uh, tell you how many were going to be mined or anything like that there was no numbers that I could crunch to to see those things and and uh, and uh, so I didn't buy in in them and come to find out after the fact that basically 80% of the entire supply of this cryptocurrency were given to those who bought in at the pre-sale slash pre-mine and Ethereum is a pre-sale pre-mine and that's the only way that they could get those coins. They weren't mined after the release of Ethereum. They were given, they were pre-mined, and then Ethereum came out, and they gave those to the people who gave them money. And they raised about $60 million in Bitcoin, which the company, the centralized company of Ethereum, held on to. The CEO, or the... I can't remember what he called himself. It's not CEO, but Chief Operations Officer of, of Ethereum is a guy named Joseph Lubin. He used to work for Goldman Sachs. He was a Wall Street hedge fund manager. And from my perspective on what I think happened was he... It seems reasonable to believe that he wooed Vitalik into coming and, hey, kid, I... Uh, see can see that you've got great ideas he, he, he understands tech 
and he understands finance, which is dangerous. And uh, and he wooed Vitalik into into uh, coming, and he would raise the funds, and he raised. You know, he was doing that pre-sale. They raised sixty million dollars, one of the most successful pre-sales ever. Well, you've got a Wall Street hedge fund manager, Joseph Lubin, and uh, and uh, he knows. You know, that's what he does: is he raises raises money. And uh, go check out the video called uh, what is it called? Jim Cramer manipulation. You know the guy on CNBC. Mad Money, Jim Cramer manipulation. Look up that video, and uh, that's a that is a Wall Street hedge fund manager. They know how to manipulate markets, move markets. He tells you in that video how they do it. Joe, this is what Joe Lubin was. He was a Wall Street hedge fund manager, and they call their people in the press, and they call their big buddies at you know over at Lehman Brothers, and they do all that. And all these people now in Ethereum are greedy, or techies, or ignorant, or undesirables, from my perspective as a libertarian who cares about solid, sound money principles. So Ethereum can easily be manipulated because of that pre-sale. So anyway, now, moving right along through the history. Then I hear about this RSK Labs, www.rsk.co, which is backwards compatible to Ethereum, and it's Turing complete, like Ethereum. The, only, the main difference, if you go to that website, www.rsk.co, the, co the coin that they have has no value. So that coin has no value, so it's merge mined with Bitcoin, and soon to be Litecoin, so the gold and silver. So you don't have to buy into that 80% 80, 80 pre-mine of Ethereum, and all of the development that's going on in Ethereum can go whoosh, right over to RSK. When people figure out about that pre-mine of, of Ethereum, and, uh, and I just watched a video from Adam Meister, and he was talking about pre-mines, and he talked about Ripple being a pre-mine, which maybe it is, maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know much about Ripple because it's another centralized bank coin like Ethereum. Probably is, but I don't know. But he he didn't say anything about Ethereum, and I le I just left a message on his thing. I said, well, what about Ethereum? Is Ethereum a pre-mine? Why or why not? I would like. I'm issuing this as a challenge to Adam Meister. I want to hear the answer to that question. Is Ethereum a pre-mine? Why or why not? So tweet this video to him. Tell him you want an answer for that question. Is Ethereum a pre-mine? I love Adam Meister. He's my buddy. I mean, we've been we've been kind of chit-chatting back and forth over the years. It seems like years, I don't know, in this space, it's like things happen so fast. Maybe it's only been six months, I don't know. But it seems like a while ago. No, it's been a while. It's been some years. So we've been kind of going, you know, going back. And uh, I hope to get out there and meet him sometime. But a friendly debate. And I don't know, maybe he says, yeah, Ethereum's a pre-mine. But I'm curious, and I want to hear it. And I think you should hear it, hear it from him, too. Because he was calling out, he said all these crap coins. He was going to get a little bent on his... Uh, on his uh, thing there. But I want to hear the answer to that. <laughs> I'll put a link down below. Probably not right away because I'm running around and talking to you guys. But uh, ask, ask my Adam Meister to give me an answer on that. Is Ethereum a pre-mine? Why or why not? And an explanation. No, it's not a pre-mine. You could have been there. It just so happens that you know, nobody was. Or there was a lot of people. And I think, you know. Anyway, go ahead. Tweet this to him. See what's up. Adios, muchachos. Ha <laughs> ha.